we are now at a crucial time in the fight against coronavirus. And these new rules may seem um, very extreme, but they're absolutely necessary if we're going to be successful in slowing the spread of the virus. The scale of this approach reflects the gravity of the situation that we are faced with. These are very stringent measures in many ways, but they are vital vital if our health service is going to be able to cope with the, with the crisis and if we're going to be successful in protecting our frontline health workers and ultimately our number one priority to save lives. So what we do today as individuals is going to have a direct impact on how our health service is going to be able to respond to the coronavirus emergency. Part of the measures which have been announced include the shutting down of all non-essential businesses and services. The executive today has taken steps to clarify the list of essential businesses that are permitted to remain open to members of the public during this emergency. We have approved the continued opening of a range of retailers and services from corner shops and supermarkets to dental surgeries and vet clinics. This list also includes credit unions and post offices given the reliance on many in our communities on these services. It also covers a range of essential retail services such as pharmacies, hot food takeaways and petrol stations. As well as providing clarity for the public, it's important that business, businesses here are absolutely clear about their responsibilities. Among the places that should not open their doors are clothes, shops, electronic shops, hair and beauty and nail salons, libraries, gyms. These are not essential services, and if they have not already done so, please shut your doors now. Not next week, not in a few days' time, but absolutely just right now. Hotels, hostels, bed and breakfast, caravan parks and camping sites should all be closed, except where caravans and mobile homes are being used as a permanent residences, and where hotels are providing emergency accommodation. As things stand, manufacturing and construction firms can continue to operate, as long as they are providing strict social distancing measures and that, that is strongly reinforced. And we accept this is a very confusing picture. And we have received many concerns today from people from right across manufacturing and construction looking for clarity. This situation is going to be kept under review and we will continue to engage with both sectors in coming days. We know only too well how difficult it is for those businesses to shut their doors. We know last week we had a generous economic package that helps us to deal and support with employer or employees to have their, their wage uh, secured, but we still do not have clarity in terms of self-employed support, and that is something that we're pushing very um, strongly for. We're disappointed that we didn't have an announcement um, on that today, but we know that that will help uh, companies to do the right things. But my, our message is very clear. If you are not an essential service, shut your doors. We will continue to provide all the support that we possibly can for all those people across those sectors who are affected by this crisis. As I said, the financial package last week does give some certainty and some security to many employees, but we still need to push for more for self-employed. What we need to make sure is that workers are kept safe. What we need to make sure is that um, there's no work vans travelling to a job somewhere with three or four fellas in it you know, to, to go and do their day's work. That's not a safe environment for people. Um, so what we need to see is clarity. I think that for a number of employees, they've been waiting, awaiting today perhaps an announcement from the British government in terms of support for the self-employed. I think in the absence of that, it's making it more difficult. But our message couldn't be clearer. If you're not an essential service, we're asking people to shut their doors. That's what needs to happen here. Um, but ultimately, we have to protect um, all, work, all, all of the workforce and all those people that are going out about their day's, their day's work. I would, my message to the public would be, don't wait till there's enforcement procedures in place. None of us should wait. Our actions today will save lives. Yes. Our actions today will prevent the pressure that would ultimately come on to our health service. So today, we have the opportunity in our grasp to be able to save lives, and that's the message to the public um, that I want everybody at home um, to hear. In terms of the British um, military personnel, we don't need to deploy the British military personnel. We have very strong civil contingency place, uh, group in place established by the executive. It looks at all the emergency services. We also have brilliant support networks out there across sporting fields and everything else right into community level that are prepared to do their part. And I have no doubt that we can respond to this emergency in that way.